Hey man, everybody, good to have you and welcome to our series called Renew. We are talking about emotional health and just want to give a shout out as I do every week to Pastor Rick Warren. We're using a lot of his material and I promise you we're almost done. Don't miss today and next week we've got an amazing thing that we got lined up uh, around vocation. So it means work. And I think it's very important right now in this environment and in this pandemic we got uh, someone coming out to have a chat with us. I'm super excited for today and for that. Let's get straight into it. So if we want to practice emotional health, we must, number one, face our feelings. That's so important. Uh, it says in Psalm 39, verses 2 and 3, When I kept things to myself, I felt weak. Deep inside me, I moaned all day long. And it's so important, and this is so important, going again, a lot of these things dovetail. It's so important that we have spiritual friends and small groups where we can share our feelings, not only with our wives, our husbands, our children, but with other people who we can pray with, who we can speak to, not just a counselor, not just a doctor, a pastor, a whatever, someone I can just relate to. Here's another one, God also. And we can talk and express our feelings. The second one is uh, we must forgive those who hurt us. That's so important. It's so important, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, it talks about us being forgiven by God. And because of that, we can forgive others. And that's a very powerful principle. Forgiveness isn't just about the other person. It's more for you. And I know that sounds so countercultural. It sounds so weird and paradoxical because when I release the other person, I am free to move on. But when I'm holding on to them, I can't let them go. It's like I'm physically hugging them. And I want to keep moving with this piece of luggage that I'm holding in my heart. So that's what forgiveness does. It releases. It doesn't condone what happened. It doesn't say it's okay. It's saying I'm moving on. I'm letting you go from malice and hatred. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind, it says. Be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in just as in Christ, God forgave you. Because you are forgiven, we have the power to forgive. Moving right along, keeping a nice pace going here, a nice cadence, uh, a cadence, not cadence, a nice cadence, a nice pace. Replace lies with truth. It's so important. Often when we get hurt in life, the devil, the enemy, the slanderer, the liar, the deceiver, implants a lie in that moment of pain. And what we then do is we grab that and we think it's truth. And it gets embedded in our hearts and then we live based on the law. So number one, when we, we're talking about emotional health, to keep emotionally healthy, we must understand what hurts us, why it hurts us, and what is the law that we believe about what happened. Then we replace it with truth. And where do we find truth? We find it in the Bible. We find the promise for that law and replace it. Romans 12, 2 says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And the way you change the way you think, we've spoken about this, is getting the word into our hearts and our minds. So very important for emotional health. Number four, moving along at a rapid cadence. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the word for the day. Cadence is leave. You've got to leave your past behind you on the, and look on the road ahead. I, I loved an image. I went and I heard a great man of God preach one day and he was talking about your life is very much like a car. The reason the windscreen is so big is because your future is bigger than your past. And the reason the rear view mirror is so small is because it's important to know where you've come from, but it's not the greatest part of your life. What God is more interested is in your present and in your future. And you've got to look ahead and you've got to leave the past behind you. You cannot make your past the windscreen and your future the rear view mirror. A lot of people live like that. They focus on their past all the time. They don't deal with things and that becomes their future. Isn't that crazy? So listen to what the Bible says in the book of Job about leaving your past behind you and looking ahead. It says in Job 11, 13 to verse 16, put your heart right. Reach out to God, it says. Face the world again with, be firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more. Your past, friends, is not your future, but you need to make that decision. The old you is also not the new you. 
What a great idea. And, now, and the last one is, you've got to use your pain to help others. I love this scripture in 2 Corinthians 1 verses 4. It said, God comforts us every time we have trouble so that when others have trouble, we can comfort them with the same comfort God gives us. Man, that is astoundingly beautiful. So here's the thing. Whenever we're going through things, we know that God is for us. God is with us. God helps us through people and relationships. Very important. And then God heals us. And then from that place of healing, we help others. Is this not who Jesus is? The wounded healer. If you see Jesus today, he still has holes in his hand. Yes, he's resurrected, but he's a wounded healer. And the great thing about Jesus is that his wounds bring healing. That says by his stripes, we are healed. And once we associate with God and we come near God and we allow God to impart into our lives, our wounds are then used to heal, just like the master. What a great concept. And friends, I hope you've enjoyed that. Short and sweet, I want to say a couple of prayers, but before we do that, I just want to get over to the giving part of the sermon. Uh, listen to what it says in Deuteronomy 8, 18. Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Friends, I want you to understand in these times, let's continue to be givers. Give us to the kingdom of God. Give us to the Lord's church. Why is that important? Because the message of hope and truth needs to go out. We need to continue to help many others. And we pray for that right now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you. Please continue to bring food uh, as we continue to feed families. Continue to bring blankets as we help those underprivileged people that are cold this winter season. Let's continue to be a blessing. I want to pray two prayers with you right now. First of all, that God would heal you and use you in an emotional way that you can touch and, and bless other lives. Let's pray for that. Father, we pray right now that you continue to bless, heal, and inspire people right now in the name of Jesus. In every area of their life, we pray. Amen. And second prayer is if you don't know Jesus, I want you to say this prayer with me, and then please email the church or phone the church and get connected. Every Wednesday night, I have a connect group. We send the link out. You're more than welcome to join us and fellowship with brothers and sisters. We had a great uh, online meeting this week where we broke into groups and we visited just 30 minutes. It was awesome. Uh, let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart today, and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And I accept him as Lord and Savior. Wash me by his blood. Fill me with his spirit right now in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you've said that prayer, the Bible says you're born again and get connected. Love you lots. We're in life. Let's continue to be a light and a salt in this world. And please don't miss next week. We are talking about work. I think it's so relevant right now in this economy. And we have a few surprises. Keep praying for us. We pray for you. God bless you.